Hello everyone! Before we start, I want to thank Storyblocks for partnering with me today and help me deliver this video without interfering with its content. Storyblocks is a website where you can download unlimited high-quality, royalty-free photos, illustrations, vectors, icons, and much more. If you sign up as a member, you can download anything from hundreds of thousands of images in their member library and save up to 60% on their marketplace content, where you can purchase images directly from the artists. Today we're helping you win 7 free days so you can try it out and use their content for your own creative projects. All you have to do is click the link in the down bar below and start downloading free of hassles. Hello everyone! Today's video is all about how to assemble a binder in the cheaper way you possibly can. This applies to college students, high school students, and even if you want to use a binder in your personal and home organization system. The main tip here is to buy a simple binder that you can completely customize according to your taste and still affordable enough. Although I bought this binder here in Europe, you have similar binders like this in the USA. For example, you have the Avery binder which costs something like 3 to 4 dollars and it's really affordable if you want a binder like this to start organizing your notes and all of your files for the next semester. This binder is very simple, but it has a few characteristics that make it perfect to start customizing your binder and organizing everything you need. So first of all, it's a very simple white binder and it's like a medium-sized binder. I think this corresponds to um, 1.5 inches or so and it's just a standard sized binder that you can usually find at your local staples or target store. This binder comes with this really useful pocket so you can completely customize the front of your binder as well as your spine and this is great because you can categorize all of your binders according to subjects uh, year or semester. As soon as you put all of your binders in your shelf, it will be really easy to understand what you'll need to pick. Opening the binder, there isn't anything really special about it. It has a two-ring binder and of course this changes depending on your location or the type of binder you wish to purchase. I usually prefer three-ringed or four-ringed binders because in my perspective, the more rings a binder has, the less likely the paper is to rip. So if you can, try to purchase a 3 or 4 ring binder. In my case, I could only find this 2 ring binder. In the left side of the binder, we have this clear plastic pocket. I don't know if you can see it on camera. It's a really useful feature, so you can keep here any kind of loose papers or seats or even your schedule. Um, and that makes it a little bit easier to filing things that don't have a specific place just yet. And on the side, there's nothing here. It's just a plain um, binder back. It has no pockets whatsoever, but that also makes it really great for uh, a small little tip I'm going to give you in a few minutes. Of course, you can assemble the binder any way you like. The possibilities are almost endless. I'm going to show you how I usually did when I used the binder back in college as well as in high school. And I really love to customize my binders um, to have a really efficient organizational system where I could find all of my papers, documents and notes whenever I had to carry my binder on the go. Okay, so let's talk about binder fillers first. If you know me for a while, you know that I've always preferred either squared or dotted paper for note-taking. Of course, this completely varies by person and the standard is still called ruled paper. Binder refills come in all different colors and brands and you can find really, really cheap options in your local Target as well as Amazon if you are overseas. My particular binder paper is either from two brands. This paper is from a Spanish brand, I think, called Michelrius. I don't think if it's available on the USA, but sometimes I find it in Amazon.com, so I think you can order it online. 
My other brand for binder paper is um, also a European brand called Oxford. They're really similar brands in terms of paper quality and also of paper type. So both of these brands usually work with squared paper and they mostly offer these colored margins which I really love so I can categorize notes by subject and use these different colors to write all of my notes in a color code so I can quickly see, even without reading the contents, what type of subject I'm working with. So make sure to choose the perfect paper before you start assembling your binder because the paper is what's really going to make this system good or not for you. There's something I always love to do with my binders and that was create a sort of uh, notepad in the back with blank paper so I could quickly access blank paper to take my notes if I had to make um, any tables or draw any mind maps or something during my classes. To create a result like that you'll only need some blank paper as well as one of these binder clips. So the trick here is to align the paper with the back of your binder like so. And then use the paper clip so you can hold the paper to the back of your binder like this. So you have a full notepad in the end of your binder that you can quickly access whenever you want and won't even interfere with the rest of your notes and the rest of your setup. Also you can close the binder as you usually would and the only thing you'll really see is a little binder clip sticking out from the top of your binder. Another thing I enjoyed to do with my binder was try to incorporate uh, a few school supplies that I knew I would need on the go, such as post-it notes, uh, some flags, as well as flashcards. So for sticky notes, the trick is just peeling out the paper in the back of your sticky notes, so it's sticky enough so you can put it right on your binder and access the sticky notes you need during your studying sessions. If you have any other sticky notes you'd like to glue to the front of your binder, you can just grab some double-sided tape, tape it to the back of your sticky notes pack and then put it right here so it won't fall off whenever you close your binder. For flashcards, since they don't have any kind of sticky material, you can really glue, glue them to the back of your binder. So for that, I usually use the exact same method as I used with my back notepad. So I'll just grab a paper clip and clip my flashcards into my binder. So whenever I'm in class and I think there's a really good question coming up that I think should be answered, that I should study for my test, I just pop one of these out, I write the answer as well as the questions in both sides so I can study in my future study sessions. So for my class schedule, I usually glued it to my dashboard, which I'm going to do in a minute, or I would stick it right in this transparent pocket so I could access my class schedule whenever I open my binder and to have like a hassle-free experiences whenever I had to run from one class to another. Also, customizing the front of your binder can be really, really easy. All you have to do is either go on the internet and search for binder covers, which you'll find tons of it on Google Images. Just try to search for a large sized image so you can print it out correctly. Or you can also make your own binder divider using any kind of design software creating and drawing your own designs. So in my case I have this elephant design in here, so I'm just going to slip the page under the plastic cover and since this is just for the purpose of this video I'm not going to write anything on the cover but you can use this blank space to either write out your name as well as the name of the subject you are currently enrolling in. So for binder dividers I think that the simpler you can get the better and when you buy some cardboard dividers they will always be cheaper than the plastic options. So here I just have some plain white binder dividers. Of course you can go all out with this, you can use some cardstock paper with colorful patterns and designs but I just wanted to go with the simplest option 
which is the white dividers. The organization of these dividers totally depends on the kind of organization you're going for your binder. So for example, if you're using your binder for multiple subjects of course sets, you'll mostly use each one of these dividers for each one of your subjects. On the other hand, if you're using each specific binder for a specific subject, you'll want as well to use dividers because you want to categorize information you put and organize into your binder. So for example, you can have one of these dividers just assigned for your own in-class notes and another divider specially that specially organize any kind of handout, assignment, syllabus uh, or documents that your professor hands you, another divider for tests, quizzes and any preparatory material that you like to take in order to prepare yourself for the exam and then perhaps a final divider that you can use to file any kind of information that is secondary to your subject like any relevant articles you found with information on your subject, uh, field trips materials, any kind of notes on, I don't know, movies or books that are relevant to your subject but are not mandatory and as such should not be put under the first divider which is fundamentally made for your own class notes. The first section of my binder usually the first section of my binder usually had any type of given materials that would be relevant for the whole of my semester. That usually comprehended things like my syllabus, my yearly calendar, a list of assignments and bibliography for the entire year. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to file in my binder in my main category or my main divider all the documents provided for me by the professor and that will be relevant for me to study and organize myself during the entire semester. Okay, so just for the sake of showing you what kind of documents I'm referring to, here I have a list of readings on all of my materials for one of my past um, classes. I mainly tried to uh, categorize all of my topics for that subject and then assign each one of these topics to reading materials for my main textbook as well as some secondary articles and case law that our professor provided us. So I had always kept this main page in the beginning of my binder so I could quickly access this page and flip through it and see if I had checked all of my readings and if I was right on track. This is also an example of another kind of important documents you can have. For example, I have here uh, calendars for my current master's classes for the entire winter semester so this also comes in handy whenever I need to organize my time for future classes and if I need to see um, the time schedule and classroom for each one of my classes. Another thing that I really like to do is use my first divider as my dashboard for my binder. And this completely varies according to your personal style and your personal needs. In my case, I've always had a lot of trouble remembering to take down my questions during the class and then ask my professors. So I usually just grabbed a small notebook that I could double tape to the front side of my binder and then all of my questions for the classes for different classes would be written on my to-do list. I would prioritize them and then I would try as much as I could to refer back to possible sources where I could find the information I was looking for. And if I couldn't check that item out of my question list then I would approach my professor and ask uh, if he could clarify my doubt uh, or come up with an answer to my question. So guys, I think this is all for today. I really hope you got something out of this really basic binder organization video. Of course, I don't organize my binders like this anymore. My masters really don't require this kind of organization since most of my classes are weekly, so that would require like a binder each week and that wouldn't be efficient and it would really not be budget friendly at all. So I'm still trying to come up with a good uh, system so I can archive my notes that I'm taking in my computer because I'm mainly studying 
um, in my computer and taking my notes on my computer and trying to adopt a paperless kind of note-taking style and reading. I think I'm going to use this month of November to come up with um, a new binder organization system uh, for my master's degree and if I do I will be sure to film a video if it's proven to be an efficient system for me so you can expect a video on that like in really early 2018 so right now this is what I used to do until my fourth year of college and I really enjoyed using my binders like this so I hope you liked this video and I'll see you next week bye